In this video, we're beaming packets with a Ubiquiti Nano Beam 5AC 16 dBi antennas. So, if you're a subscriber uh, to this channel, if you've viewed other videos before, you'll see that I've spoken about um, the Ethernet over power line adapters. Those have been working really well for me, uh, but here in the cave, uh, we're some short distance from the house. So I thought I would try out these uh, Ubiquiti uh, Nano Beam antennas. So they are designed for point to point coverage, typically over long distances. Um, obviously I'm only trying to go uh, a few meters, but I thought I might have to keep these in the house, in, you know, in the cabinets or what have you, and save having them external, and because they've got that ability to do the long range, perhaps they can make it through walls. So let's just talk about that experience as we go through it. Obviously, if you haven't got any of these antennas already, you need two of them, so we have two. Like I said, this is the Nano Beam uh, 5 AC airwave antenna, 16 dBi. Um, so it operates at five gigahertz, so obviously a, le a less busy airband, so hopefully it's gonna work well. Uh, it's also using the Airmax AC technology. So in the box, I'll show you quickly what you get. So you get one nano beam antenna. We'll look at that in a little bit more detail shortly. You get one plug. So over here, uh, we're getting a European plug. Uh, most providers you buy it from will ship a three pin plug uh, in the UK uh, separately. You get uh, a little operating quick start manual. A metal clamping, um, uh, what can't really call these now, uh, clamp <laughs> uh, that you can use to attach to a pole if you're mounting on a pole. And then the final two pieces in here are uh, a mounting uh, bracket. So this is like a, a ball joint that connects onto the back of the device. Uh, with this one you can screw it directly onto a wall. Uh, they also sell a wall mount as well and then you can see there's a slight holes in here that you can put some uh, you know, either the clamp through or if you want to use cable ties, you know, UV uh, resistant cable ties to connect it. So that's what we have in the box. So, as I mentioned, let's take this protective cover off. We don't need that. So, these are waterproof, so obviously you can mount them uh, outside. Uh, that's what they're designed for. On the back here, you can see there's not really a lot going on. You have uh, basically an internal spirit level to help you align uh, polarity with uh, obviously the other antenna. What you can't see here right now um, is um, there is two uh, icons, a power icon and then uh, like a, a network directional arrow that shows that it's obviously connected to the network. So when this is powered on, you'll see that that lights up blue uh, as does the second um, light to say it's connected to the LAN, obviously if it's plugged in. Um, and there's a, this is a signal bar. The one thing I realized that isn't in the box, um, but is, must still be downstairs, is these all come with power over ethernet. So there's a single point, so you get a little uh, power over an ethernet block that you plug in uh, both the ethernet cable to your network, as well as uh, to this device. So, as I mentioned, you connect this like so, and this ball joint will just fit on the back there and then tighten up and you can mount it and you've got quite a, good, a lot of movement in terms of where you can, can direct it. Off again. Then underneath you can see there's a small hole here. You remove that and in here is that single Ethernet uh, port which is providing data transfer as well as power through that power of Ethernet socket. There's also a very small uh, reset button. So if you need to reset this for any reason, put a paper bit in there, hold it for 10 seconds whilst it's already powered on, 
and it will reset back to factory settings. So yeah, I've never used Ubiquiti's products before. I've heard lots of good things about them from a consumer perspective, um, so I was keen to try them out. And so far, so good. Everything's worked really well. It's, it's pretty easy to set up. One of the things that I like about these point-to-point -point devices versus um, their, their APs in terms of how you manage them is these have uh, onboard software on them. So the management interface, you go to your browser, everything's configured on here. You don't need a different a separate utility tool that you're running on a separate box to manage everything. So that's really helpful. Um, so basically, once these come out of the box, they are configured with a static IP address of 192.168.1.20. So you need to get a, a laptop or some device uh, with an Ethernet connector, plug that in, change your local IP address to something other than that. Uh, obviously, make sure it's not on your network. So 192.168. 1.10 for example, go to um, 192.168.1.20 in your browser and then you'll be presented uh, with uh, the interface. So when you first uh, log in, default credentials are UBNT and UBNT. You set your region, so this is important. So obviously here we set UK um, for the country. So this defines obviously what um, bands are available. Once you've connected that, the current firmware will force you after when you save to change that default password. So that's good. So you should change it to something more complex. Um, and basically, there's lots of advanced features that you can kind of drill into. But basically, all you need to do is two simple things. One of these devices you're going to set up as essentially the access point. So it can be a singular access point or a multiple access point. Um, so that means are you going to have just one device that's going to be talking to it, or you may have multiple. So that's going to define um, what you do there. Um, so you select this, um, set this up, one of them that uh, has the internet connection um, as the access point. You then give it uh, an SSID, so you can obviously leave it standard or change it. Um, select your security setting, so uh, AES. Uh, with PSK, put your passphrase in there, save that, then go to the network setting and set a static IP address. So this should be a free IP address that you have on your existing network. So perhaps you've got uh, you know, 192.168.0. something. So you either want to specify a static IP address that's already available, or you can use DHCP, but I would recommend not. If you are using DHCP, then set um, a reservation for specific IP address using uh, a MAC address that's associated with these. Once you've got the access point set up, install that, plug it in, um, then get the other one out of the box, set this one up in a very similar way. This time you're using uh, setting up as a station. So you go through the same process, set the station, um, set the SSID. You will see um, an option for a MAC address that's going to lock on to. There is a button where you can search for this one transmitting. In my experiences, that didn't always work. So but literally just look at the, the box or under here, you've got the MAC address. Type that in and this will then lock on to this access point, the other station. Um, so what that means is it's going to be, as soon as these things boot up, they're going to, the other one's going to start looking for the other one. As soon as it is, it's going to lock on. And that's when you will start then start to see these bars. So there's around five bars. And um, once that's locked on, that's when you then have your point to point. Obviously, the more bars, the better signal strength. Uh, and it just works uh, really, really well. Um, so in terms of my specific usage, uh, I am finding it does work through walls. So even though obviously this is supposed to be able to go, you know, I think it's 20 kilometers or, or something, um, it can penetrate walls. Obviously it has a mega impact on performance, uh, but it does work. Um, so what I'm probably actually gonna do is keep uh, the access point one that's kind of hidden in the cupboard in the house where the internet connection, uh, we, have, we have two internet connections here, but this, I'm trying to set up a backup, um, have one in the house and then mount this one on the external wall of the cave. And then that's giving me almost full signal strength, um, which is fantastic. Um, so I'm getting, I think it's around, with, good, with, with two bars, you're getting around 100 uh, megabit data transfer, so you know, pretty good. Um, and with um, 
you know, four four bars uh, getting around 350 uh, megabits per second. So good transfer rates, obviously not equivalent to gigabit Ethernet. If you are fortunate enough to run that, um, but still um, typically better than uh, Ethernet over power line solutions. The one thing I am finding different. Um, to the Ethernet over power line. Ethernet over power lines can tend to be a bit choppy. So far in the few days of running this up, there's been no dropouts whatsoever, regardless of, of weather or anything. So I think these are a good option. Um, and obviously, if you have a larger property, uh, you, and you perhaps you want multiple buildings uh, connected, this is a great solution. So they're not cheap, they're around uh, 90 pounds each, I think, um, but Good product, well constructed, and they work really well. And it is it is really simple. So, hope this is helpful. So, if you're thinking of trying to find other solutions to avoid running cables over long distances to separate buildings, yes, you can look at the Ethernet over power line if you have uh, electricity running uh, from the same properties, so they are connected. If not, definitely check these things out. And even if you have, I think maybe it's worth trying them out. There's there's different versions that have. Um, less range. I just went for one that had um, a higher throughput, so I wanted to be able to get up to 450 megabits per second, which is what this is capable of in optimal conditions. They also figured, you know, stronger DBI, if I'm trying to penetrate um, walls, it's a better option than something that may be like 6 DBI. So yeah, I hope this was helpful. Um, so again, Ubiquiti Nano Beam AC, great point-to-point -point solution and I think in general these ubiquity products seem really good so I'd be interested in trying out a few more of those in the future. Thanks for watching this video, a thumbs up would be really appreciated. If you're interested in other geek type videos please consider subscribing to Spectrum Geeks. Why not also follow us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. And before you leave why don't you check out one of these other videos that may be of interest. Thanks again for watching.